example of someone who came through my academy where um, that's where I want you to get to, where it's like, okay, you have that drill that translates to the golf course and then you're just grooving it over and over and over again. Right. And, um, you, you know, I think the, the thing that worked for you was that you, you know, we, we worked through a few, a couple different things. I was looking at the, our prior lesson notes, but it's not like we, we had to do all this searching and guessing. And there are probably moments where you hit it poorly on the range or you couldn't figure it out, but the more and more you did the same things, the, the easier it got. Right. For sure. For sure. Cause, you know, even with those new mechanics, like it's, there's going to be moments where, um, it, you know, it's going to feel off. Right. Absolutely. Um, no, exactly. I, I think that's right. And just doing, you know, if you're setting yourself up throughout the week, if you're a weekend golfer to be in a position to actually succeed in that limited time where you're playing, you need to set yourself up in, you know, those preceding, hours during the week where you have time uh or even when you don't think you have time you really do so that mm -hmm. all that stuff created and i think implemented yeah i think that you know that was a big thing for you too and so just to kind of paint the picture for people listening like you were the type of person that like you're in the city you're working living in the city through the week then on the weekend you get a little bit of chance to play some golf and you, you have a very limited time window to work on things and you have to work on things in in, in a, an apartment which is tough right so I guess talk to me about like in relation to the plan that we built that you liked from the program and, and how we're able to implement that. Sure. Maybe I'll talk about it in a few different buckets. Um, first being putting. I think that's the easiest thing that, that anyone can do, whether you got a rug or a fancy putting mat or, you know, whatever it is. Um, I mean, you can really utilize that. You don't, you don't realize how much time you, you spend sitting on the couch or, you know, scrolling through stuff on your phone or, you know, even when you're just trying to, walk if you got five minutes and, and roll a few putts uh, and maybe even more granularly looking at that with respect to just not just whacking you know putts but being mindful about you know going through routine you you, you harp on a feel routine I think you call it where you do you know handful of putts with your eyes closed looking at the target one hand um, and then you know obviously there's pace and, and line so uh, just a lot just so much to work on and and you can really do it. And that that's putting is one thing where you know, maybe your back gets sore bending over for too long, but you know, five, 10 minutes a day gets a long way and it really doesn't cost anything to do that. Um, I'd say that yeah. was absolutely crucial for me. Um, the mental side I, I talked about a little earlier is still a work in progress for me, just being disciplined enough to you know, spend the five, 10 minutes in the morning meditating or, or doing whatever, you know, visualizing you know, the holes and, and how I want to play and where I want to, you know, where I want my head to be at when I'm actually on the course. Uh, and then lastly, you know, more of the physical side and, and swinging, just having an open space, whether it's at a near park or on, you know, on, on the balcony or wherever you can get some, some space to move. Um, just going through some feels and, and work your stability and strength and something that I translated from, from some of my sports growing up, um, just how to do that and, and how to prioritize mobility and stability. Um, was definitely prioritized by your program and, and something I internalized. Yeah. I love that, man. I mean, it's, it's so true what you said about just having, you know, we always have a little bit more time than we think. And like you, that makes me think about like the, probably the best putter in the world right now, Cam Smith. And from my understanding, like when he's in maintenance mode, he's only putting for 20 to 30 minutes a day. I mean, we all have, you know, most people I think have 20 to 30 minutes a day where they're just sitting on their ass and watching Netflix and not doing anything. And you can even, as you're watching Netflix, or on your, or maybe not scrolling your phone, you can, you can putt as you're doing something else, right? Watching TV. Um, so yeah, I think you'd be the perfect example of someone who, you know, in a Northern climate, you know, you're going through, you know, you're in a living situation where it's not like you're just, you can walk out your door and there's a golf course right there, but you actually saw some improvement, right? Which is pretty cool. Uh, so talk to me about like on the, the starting point, like with your, um, with your swing in particular, like what were some of the things that you're struggling with and then going through the mentorship, what were some of the things that you came out with feeling like you had a better understanding of? Yeah. Um, I would say the, I think you about halfway through switched over, um, from, from one software to another where it had this, it, a, it had a visual representation of kind of your, your different angles, uh, at, at points in the swing and, and seeing that was really helpful. I think, um, especially when you look at it at it side by side with some of the pros, you can really tell 
what position you're in and, and where things might go awry, um, which might cause, you know, certain misses. Like I speaking to for my for my own game, I'd say probably the most significant change that I made um or saw was driving. Um just just variability with driving. And a lot of that was you harping on a, a strong, stable top position where you're in this, you know, you've got width, your hands are wide. And then just from there, I felt a little bit less of a need to, you know, be overly active with my lower body, which tends to shoot my hip out. And you were about yeah. that. And that's a thing for me to think about in the long term, just working, continuing to work on my hip mobility. Um, because these changes aren't, you know, some of the ones that I, I've been playing for a long time. It's not like, yeah, you know, within two weeks, you know, ability is gonna go from X to Y. Um, it's just something that to monitor and keep practicing. Uh, but I would say that, you know, just I I felt confident and, and maybe it was a mental change, just you know, seeing a repeatable driver swing. I went from, you know, a couple of years ago I played my club championship, left the driver in the trunk to now, you know, want to hit it every hole. Um, and I think it's a little bit of a mentality thing and just, you know, feeling yeah. confident. Maybe I'll lose a little bit of distance, but I can hit the ball, you know, on a rope and, you know, at least go up and hit it again, as opposed to having to take a drop. Yeah. I, I mean, I think you're on, on your way to like, especially 2024 with the stuff you've done in your swing, you know, it's getting to the point where, you know, obviously reps is a factor, but 72 to 74 every day is another question. Right. And um, a lot of it now is going to be for you. I think just building on the same things and then continue to work on your short game. Right. And that's something that I appreciate about what you did with your work is like you were a lot of golfers that I work with only want to address their swing, but you were, you really wanted to kind of know a little bit more about your putting stroke and, and maybe where you're, and, and when I, it's funny when I looked at your putting stroke, I'm like, well, there's not a whole lot wrong with it. So maybe let's work on more like the visual elements and, and just getting into a good routine, making sure you're reading the greens correctly. Right. So, um, Talk to me. I don't know if you have an opinion on this or not, but and this just kind of just came to my head. Like with like traditional, I, I assume I think you've done in person lessons before, and you've done online lessons now. Obviously, what what's your opinion on like the future of golf instruction? Like, do you feel like online lessons are just as effective as in person lessons? Um, do you feel like it's something that um, more golfers can benefit from? Just be curious to to hear what you think about that. Now that you've gone through an online mentorship. Yeah, I think it's a it's a fair question. I would almost divide the population into a few different buckets, like, you know, beginners, um, those that, that aren't really comfortable with, with online instruction. I think a good proxy for, for how maybe golf training and, um, you know, golf coaching live versus in person versus sorry, uh, video versus in person is to look at like the fitness injury in, industry and, and how folks are, you know, moving a site, Peloton or, you know, other, other virtual classes where they feel more comfortable being, you know, so some people feel more comfortable doing, you know, more personalized one-on-one. -on -one. Some people feel like they can within a group and it's less personalized, but it's still, you know, direct instruction. And then some people that are capable and, and independent enough to, to work on their own and, and have just a little bit of guidance. So I mm -hmm. think it depends where you come from for that. For me, like this was probably the most perfect um, setup I could have because again, I didn't have as much time um, devoted. It was really, you know, give me, give me a plan for the, week and then I'll see how I can attack as best my schedule allows. And so doing it that way really helped me, you know, I think stay ask and not get demotivated by maybe having to push an in-person lesson off a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, maybe just one point that's a little bit more concrete, like, as you said, you know, have a few thoughts about, you know, how to putt or like, where should I be working on my, my putting stroke? So when I'm in my room and maybe Netflix is on in the background and, you know, like 50% of my brain's turned on, you know, I'm working on a lot of those feels so that when I get my limited time out on the course, I can be a lot more focused. I can do my up and down competitions uh, yeah. and just track. So, you know, Cam can you know, focus and, and, and check in, you know, every week when he's checking my, my tracker on Excel or when I'm sending him updates. Um, so I think it depends on, on kind of how the person operates, but for me, the way that you, um, your, your cadence and, and the way we interacted, I thought was perfect. Yeah, I agree. No, I appreciate that. I think, you know, the one difference I saw with you versus maybe, you know, I don't like to compare too much, but I like to look at it. Like, okay, what, when you go through a program, 
what creates a successful client and what doesn't, because there's always, you know, there's always that other end where you don't get the benefit of the program is you really wanted to know what I should be doing on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, as opposed to, Oh, here's a technique and just go bang it out for a while. Um, you wanted to kind of take advantage of your time most efficiently because you live a busy lifestyle. And, and that was something I think that like from, I take, you know, myself personally, I've, I've been a student a lot longer than I've been a coach of the game. And I always found that I was making those meaningful improvements with the coaches I worked with in the past when I really wanted to know what the day to day should look like. Right. Because golf is one of those sports where it's funny, like we focus so much on, like you think about going and, and getting, uh, you know, personal or fitness instruction, um, you're you want to know a lot more about your plan than you do that actual workout where golf is a little bit different where we want to know a lot more about our swing and less about the plan and i think the two go hand in hand if you don't have that plan put together uh that can complement the swing then it kind of can all be lost like golf is a crazy sport where you can i think i say this every every time i talk with anyone about just in general golf improvement like you could have the right technique and the right amount of time and still fuck it all up <laughs> right so it's it's important to you know kind of get that measured plan and constantly be refining the plan too, right? Um, where it's, you know, to, to make sure, like, especially for better players, it doesn't feel like it gets stale because, you know, putting for putting for 20 to 30 minutes in your in your room every day, it can get pretty boring pretty quickly, right? So you have to have find ways to kind of spice it up but make sure you're also getting that tangible improvement you can actually see on the golf course, right? Uh, so Xander, talk to me about like what you're um, – like, what do you want to do in 2024? Like, you're you're more on this journey now where you're going to go out on your own, which I, I, I love. I always love getting a client to a point where they feel like they've learned enough that they can kind of coach themselves. So what's your, um I guess, in, intention for 2024 with your golf game? So it's pretty exciting. So I, at, at my 26, um, I'm in the process of becoming my own member of, of a club as opposed to just, a, you know, dependent on, on my folks, which I'm fortunate enough to have been for a while. Um, Amazing. Nice. Kind of a, I don't know. A, it, it's a little bit of a, a signal that you know I want to become, you know, take that next step or continue to take that step as a golfer. I think you know, starting with you, it was I was in the sixes with my handicap. I got down to a, you know in the threes by the end of twenty twenty three. I think more so because I just clipped a bunch more seventies, you know, rounds in the seventies. Less so than I really went low a handful of times. Like you know, I had a couple where really feeling good and, you know, maybe almost put it together to go even par. Um, but it was more just, you know, kind of increasing the floor, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. I, think I really wanted this year, whether it's, you know, continuing that trend in addition to also breaking through a little bit and, and, and having a few rounds where I feel like, you know, it's obviously never going to be perfect, but I really put things together and, and kept focused the entire time. And I don't remember where I heard this, but, um, Yes, one of the pro used to say like he had seven, seven either mental or physical mistakes per round, and just being okay with you know every time you make one, knowing that you know all pros to a certain extent will have you know a few slip ups per round, just making sure that the compounding and and continuing to kind of derail, um, and feeling like every time I go out there, it could be the day that I go in the sixties for the first time. Yeah, I love that man. I mean, I. And, you know, you, to speak to your improvements, like getting from a, if you just can, can continue to keep sustaining those improvements, like going from a six to a three, you know, if you keep doing the same things, I, I think, you know, we could get you from a three to a zero and then on to a zero to a plus three um, in an ideal scenario that, you know, making those three to four shot improvements every year is huge. Right. And like, you know, I would relate that to like, if it's a 20 handicapper, it's probably means you get down to a 10 by the end of the year. Right. So as you get into those, you know, the, the lower handicaps one shot is a huge deal right because the, the margins are just so thin and um you know like when you a lot of getting your handicap better and getting your scores better is like you said just getting the the floor a little bit i think you said floor a little bit higher uh just so you know because yeah we all want to shoot that round in the 60s or that really low round that we're looking for but if you can the thing I'm always looking for with a client is like, can you turn your really bad golf into average golf where you're not like completely derailing everything? Because those bad rounds where you shoot in the high eighties or the mid eighties, that's the ones that really rattle your confidence. And you know what, like me and you both are going to shoot in the eighties going forward at times. And uh, we're going to have those really bad rounds, but it, you know, the, the overall like looking of like, let's say 20 rounds, if you can sustain a good performance, then um, you know, that that's where you really start to see that handicap improvement, right. Which we're ultimately like, if we're be if most golfers are being honest with ourselves, like we want to, 
the, the thing that we want to get out of golf is to shoot the lowest score possible, right? Like I always say, there's two ways to enjoy the game. You can either, you know, get your scorecard lower or just start drinking. And the first one's harder, but it's more meaningful in the long term, right? Um, so uh, you we kind of covered pretty much everything I want to cover today. Um, you know, just talk to me a little bit more about uh, maybe like just the kind of the ins and outs of the putting. Like, what did you feel like you learned? We, we, we kind of hinted at it a little bit, but what are some of the little ins and outs of the putting that you took away from the uh, the mentorship? Yeah. Um, so maybe breaking it up into a, into a few components. First being the the field putting, um, something that you know I, I played lacrosse in, in school and, and and my whole life, and I you know never really felt like I was a, a great shooter. Um, I just had a pretty low shooting percentage and, and realizing my mentality around it was wrong. Um, trying to aim for really, really small spots. And if I missed getting really down on myself and, you know, asking, you know, how can I practice so much and then not perform, um, to a certain extent. And I think, you know, one thing that I, I learned through that process was just to really go down to basics and work on, you know, I would work on single arm shooting. I'd work on, you know, my wall ball, I'd work on, you know, different kind of you know, drop backs with, with weight shift. Um, and I think that that kind of goes hand in hand with, with how you think about putting, which is, you know, making sure when you're going to do getting a segment of a feel where you're just improving, um, your stroke to the point where when you're over the ball over a pressure pot or you know, five bucks with your buddies or, you know, club championship, you're confident in your stroke and you're kind of externally focused as opposed to taking internal cues and focus on, you know, how, how is my putter head coming back off the, off the line? And am I holding my finish and, you know, what's my, like feeling comfortable with my alignment and my grip. Um, so I think I really improved just feeling like I've, I've done the reps to the point when I'm on the course, I'm really target. Um, and then I, you know, one thing, a couple of things I changed was, you know, I, in my routine, I really set one. I've, I feel like I've been playing around with different routines for a long time. And I figured out that, um, you know, the, the no putting stroke practice is always better for me. Um, I I like to stand right behind the line. I actually, I think it's fortunate. My brain works in a way, like I've always kind of seen the different line do on the practice screen and I could see the way the ball dip into the cup. Um, so just focusing on where it enters the cup at what speed. Um, and then, you know, you taught me a little bit, whatever you call it, it's not aim point, but you know, using my feet for reads. Um, Mm -hmm. and I, ball up um those are a few little things around setup that really helped me just be more focused on making putts and the process of actually hitting a putt that i feel confident has a chance to go in and then accepting the result as opposed to you know trying to get my line perfect and you know work on you know perfecting the the putting swing as opposed to just hitting a good putt right yeah no i like that man i think that's cool to hear about like the kind of the parallels with lacrosse. You can draw a lot of other parallels between other sports. Like to me, the similar one would be goaltending and hockey, having all the little details of your stance. Correct. Um, another one would be like the, the one I always relate to would be, cause I used to play basketball would be foul shooting and basketball where you have everything in your stance, correct. And you have a little bit of a routine and you're keeping an automatic. Right. So uh, it's having that little bit of a detailed look at your putting you know, at the start, like it's only like the first 10% of it. And then to your point where you're on the course or you're under that pressure moment and it really just feels automatic as opposed to trying to maybe will the ball into the hole. Right. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, back to what we were talking about with, you know, on a bad day, you'll still putt decent if you've got a good process. Um, Mm -hmm. And feeling like, you know, I think it was similar. Like I never really felt like I could have a day where I go out and, you know, shoot, you know, less than a putt and a half a hole on average. Um, I went out a couple of weeks ago, just, I don't even think I warmed up. I don't even, like I, I didn't do anything and I had 12 putts on nine holes. Like I just had That's a day great. where feel good. <laughs> like things were clicking and I'll be at a fewer up and downs and, you know, hitting some four or five footers, but just like, you know, I wasn't even thinking twice and just everything was, was dropping and yeah, you, know, you got to focus on and, and channel those, uh, those moments when, when you're feeling a little lost more so than, you know, all the putts you missed, you got to be really confident that that day could be today. Um, Mm -hmm. so yeah, kind of thing that I think, you know, through this process been more ingrained. Definitely. Yeah. No, I guess I'd ask you this quickly, like with your putting, like when you're having better putting days and if it's okay, if the answer is no on this, but do you feel like mentally it's a little bit easier for you with your swing, like that you can maybe get away with a little bit more? 
Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I think it's even more like, I'd say even less, um, the, the short putting almost when my, when my touch with, with long putts is good. I think mm -hmm. that's the most pressure off of, off of my wedge game and my, my irons. Um, just cause I feel like if I get it anywhere on the surface, I'll have a good chance to two putt and, you know, three putts almost out of the question. So it, mm -hmm. it's, I'd say absolutely. And, and in general, I think it just goes down, you know, when the chipping's good, it takes pressure off the irons and, you know, when the irons are good, it takes a little bit of pressure off the driver, and you know, all, all the way down the back. But I would say for sure with the putting. Yeah, that's interesting. And I think that's something that I've, I've really kind of learned in the last few years working with so many different styles of golfers and is that putting is that ultimate thing that can take the most amount of pressure off of your game. And we're in an era where we're obsessed about swing mechanics and swinging it better. But realistically, especially like you're the prime example of someone who doesn't have access to a range or hitting that every day. Uh, you can actually really, really improve your game and feel better about your swing by working on your putting. Like I think it was John Rahm's coach when he was a kid that told him that, you know, if you're, if your driver is sick, the hospital is your putter, right? Because if you, you know, the perfect example would be like through three holes, let's say you pull your first three putts and you're staying on the fourth tee at even par, you're feeling way better about, you know, hitting your driver as opposed to you miss those first three putts. You're probably a little bit hot under the collar. You might get out of tempo and make a swing that you're, um, you know, that that's out of character. And then you, you snap hook one and then the round is, um, is going to bust. Right. So uh, yeah, that's cool, man. I, I appreciate that, you know, that look into your putting. Uh, so yeah, Xander, thanks so much for uh, taking part in the interview today. Uh, if anyone's interested in the programs, just hit the application link below. Uh, thanks so much for listening and uh, subscribe for more content like this. Awesome, Xander. Thanks a lot, buddy. I appreciate it.